let us look at the eucharistic lord more than we can see jesus jesus can see us yes, believe it yes. he can see you his eyes are 10000 times brighter than the sun amen and he is looking at each and every one of you yes. for god for jesus you are not a crowd you are an individual person who is created in his perfect image and likeness Amen. your problem is his problem yes. his sickness is his problem yes. his struggle his pain yes. every pain that you go through yes. is not yours alone he said psalm 568 i have kept count of your tossings and i have collected your tears in my bottle Amen. there is no one in this world ever said they have collected your tears in their bottle yes, maybe you have a very loving husband yes, but sir. he even he does not know the moments you cried you wept you were in agony yes, maybe you sir. have a very good wife but she does not know the pain of your heart you are jesus knows yes where else we will go who else can help us yes, he's telling us this is isaiah 66 1 and 2 thus says the lord jesus heaven is my throne jesus. and the earth is my footstool yes, what is the house that you would build for me yes, and what is my resting place jesus. all these things my hand has made and so all these things are mine says the lord Amen. but this is the one to whom i will look to the humble and contrite in spirit who trembles at my word Jesus. this is the one to whom i will look to the humble and contrite in spirit who trembles at my word as you are here kindly please don't look at anyone no human can help us jesus. only jesus yes. only jesus yes and you are with him yes he can solve all your problems his one word is a solution to all your problems yes. he's the only one who can answer all your questions yes, and sir. he's here to answer your questions he's here to solve your problems he's here to heal your sicknesses he is to remove your burdens yes, give sir. a mighty mighty clap to the lord yes, sir. jesus thank you thank you jesus thank you jesus once again raise your hands and yes, call him Jesus join your hearts the best charity is a humble prayer we are a retreat in bamenda this is in cameroon a country in africa there was 6000 people attending the retreat many on wheelchair many who were sick they believed jesus can heal and they came there and they wanted to receive healing their main intention is to receive physical healing that is why they came but the first word as the blessed sacrament was exposed the lord taught us like this teach my people to get out of themselves and pray for others Amen. teach them to get out of themselves sometimes as we are here we may be too much preoccupied with your job your family your children your promotion your travel your visa god knows you have all these problems can you set it aside and pray for your brother your sister who is beside you we taught these people to pray for the neighbor they prayed the prayer was very simple jesus master have mercy on patrick the one who is nearby come holy spirit they prayed we told them to pray 10 times in that 10 times in that few minutes more than 600 people were healed it's not Amen. when they prayed praise the lord it is not when they prayed for themselves they prayed for their neighbor yes, this is our christian life jesus 
is written about Jesus. Jesus himself said, Matthew 20, 28, The Son of Man has come not to be served, but to serve, and to, his, and to give his life as a ransom for many. We are also called to pray for others, to bless others, to serve others. And that is the way our Christian life comes to fulfillment. He is called Emmanuel. Yes, Lord. The one who is with us. Yes, Lord. He is more than with us. Jesus. He is inside us. Jesus. Pray with me. My Lord Jesus. My Lord Jesus. I believe. I believe. You are inside me. You are inside me. You are holding on to me. You are holding on to me. My Jesus. My Jesus. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. For holding on to me. For holding on to me. For tolerating me. For tolerating me. For forgiving me. For forgiving me. My Jesus. My Jesus. You know. You know. People are tired of me. People are tired of me. My own family does not want me to talk. My own family does not want to talk. But you are never tired of me. But you are never tired of me. Thank you, my Jesus. Thank you, my Jesus. You Somebody asked a question some time back. Fathers, when you preach, you announce certain healings. And sometimes we can find those healings people don't acknowledge. You announce four people got healed and when we check only three people are raising the hands. Sometimes you announce four people got healed and seven people raise the hands. If you say a number, if you say something, it should be accurate. Otherwise, people may have a doubt. Somebody came and advised and then we told them an incident happened during the time of Jesus. Jesus was walking. Hundreds of people were with him. His disciples and many people. On the way, Jesus stopped and Jesus said, Somebody touched me. Then they all laughed because they were all touching. Peter said, Master, don't you see that we are all touching you? Then why do you ask someone touched me? Then Jesus said, No, someone touched me with faith and power has gone out of me. Immediately a woman came trembling from behind and she said, Master, it was me who touched you because I believed if I touch the fringe of your cloth, I will be healed and here I am. I am healed long 12 years. I had this problem of hemorrhage, bleeding. I spent all my money with doctors. No one could help me. Medicine could not help me. Doctors could not help me. But I believe in you, my master. And I am healed, Jesus said. Go well. Your faith is set you free. Sisters and brothers, you are here in this holy family co-cathedral in this quiet city. Nothing can happen to you if you are just a crowd. If you just even move with Jesus, even if you participate in this adoration, unless leaving everyone behind, you go ahead, touch the cloth of Jesus. Touch him. He is waiting for that one single person. Isaiah 66, 2. I will look at that person who trembles at my word, who humbles himself, who is contrite in his heart. If you are repenting, if you are sorry, if you leave aside your name, your fame, your position, your job, your riches and everything and you make yourself empty before your maker, you will see miracles. This retreat will not end without Jesus entering in a very unique way inside your heart. If you are ready, like this woman with bleeding, disregarded everyone, touched the cloth of Jesus. Imagine all these people moved with Jesus, but they did not have such faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, no one can please God without faith. It is faith that heals you. It is faith that transforms you. 
it's faith that will make you a true child of god believe in him luke 17:5 the apostles therefore prayed lord increase our faith please raise your hands and pray even those who are outside remember even if you are not inside the church your jesus is so close to you he can see you he can feel where you are seated what you are feeling in your heart just tell him lord increase our faith raise your hands and pray three times lord increase our faith lord increase our faith lord increase our faith now i met a particular intercessor in vienna in austria in one of the bible conventions conducted by our own fathers in vienna when the convention was going on there was a perpetual adoration chapel and a particular lady was spending time there she comes with a bottle of water she take fasting the convention is from 9 a.m to 4 p.m the whole time she's spending her time this was the time of holidays and she was praying she has never attended our retreats but she's an intercessor so during the break i will also go and join her so she is around 69 years old an old woman she is very prayerful so in between i asked do you have a testimony why do you i can find you love jesus so much you have just great passionate love because you are taking fasting all these days praying from morning to evening without any break without any food then she said father i started to love jesus when i was 11 years old and she said I'm born in a family of four girls. I am the fourth girl in my family. My mother used to call the first born as my pearl. Though her name is not Pearl, with great love, she used to call her the first born my pearl. And she said she is the fourth born. I thought my mom will also call me at least once my pearl, but she did not call me. Then I thought maybe I'm a girl. Maybe my mom was expecting a boy because she already had three girls and again I'm a girl then that's why maybe I'm not a pearl. I'm not so precious to her. I know my mother did not hate me but still I felt a distance to my mom. I thought in my heart why she is not treating me as the first born daughter. And with all these one day i was attending the sunday mass there was thousands of people attending the mass then i saw the priest disappear during the time of the sign of peace and there came jesus i saw the vision and he looked at me and there was thousands of people but he directly looked into my eyes and he called me my pearl my pearl my pearl my pearl i was 11 years old then jesus entered inside me i started to love him because i never told anyone that my mother mom would call me as my pearl but my jesus knew the desire of my heart and he called me by that very name and i asked jesus many questions later on one question was why did my mom did not call me as her pearl why she did not feel that i also need to be treated the same way as her first born daughter was treated and the lord told me to read john 15:19 john 15:19 this intercessor only interpreted this word of god in a unique way remember the word of god is a big ocean even today when i listen other priests preaching for me it is very new it is something very strange because even the bible scholars say one single word of god can have more than 70 interpretations just because you listen to me and listen one interpretation there are many interpretation according to the context into that particular time because word of god cannot be contained by our human intellect it is far beyond our comprehension praise the lord praise the lord 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The word of God is like this. John 15:19. If you belong to the world, the world would love you as its own because you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. She interpreted world means there is another scripture you may all remember John 3:16 the word of God says that God loved the world so much that he gave his only son so that anyone who believes in him may not be perished but may have eternal life this is a familiar scripture to us God loved the world the world means not the universe but you and me the people the humans that means she interpreted as the Lord told her John 15:19 If you belong to your mother the Lord told her put the name of your mother where it is written world and she read out to me like this If I belong to my mother my mother would love me as her own because I do not belong to my mother but my God has chosen me out of my mother therefore my mother hates me please read that word of god look onto the screen and read together if, if you belong to the world as its own because you do not belong to the world but i have chosen you out of the world therefore the world hates you if you belong to your mother if you belong to your father if you belong to your employer if you belong to that particular priest anyone whom you hold with a high esteem they would love you as his son and you would become their slaves the word of god says this is again 1 corinthians chapter 7 1 corinthians chapter 7 verse 23 7 23 it's a very very important scripture you were bought with a price do not become slaves of human masters you were bought with a price jesus shed his blood and purchased you remember you are a private property of jesus christ he does not want your father your mother your brother your sister or your husband or your children love you more than him that is why many years you may have asked a question why i am treated like this why in my family i am treated like a second class citizen why i am not given that enough property why i am being treated like this just because you belong to jesus in a unique way because you are a pearl of jesus this intercessor told me like this father that's the day i came to know i am not a pearl of my mom and i never regret for that i am the pearl i am the beloved i'm the favorite of my jesus that is more than enough for me for my whole life praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord so today if somebody if your father did not love you thank the lord it is something so great that your father did not love you. That is why you, you are today inside this church being very close to Jesus. Your mother did not love you. Maybe you lost your mom. Basically it's a good thing that made you to be a true property of Jesus. This is an inner healing retreat. Inner healing is all about finding God's hand in your pain and sorrows saint john paul ii lost his mother when he was seven years old he lost his father when he was 20 years old but you have to believe john paul ii became a father to the whole universe he became a mother to many the one who lost mother and father because he composed a prayer called taught totus tus totally yours he consecrated himself to blessed virgin mary if he had a mother he would not have done that how can he become a healer he, he was a wounded person he came to know he belongs to jesus christ 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Believe one thing, Jesus is never tired of you. He loves you more than anyone, more than your father and your mother. It's because he loved you, because he wants you to experience that love. Your own people, your own parents sometimes did not love you enough. Stop questioning that. Stop accusing anyone. Why your mother did not love you? Because Jesus did not permit your mother to love you and spoil your life for Christ. Clap for your Jesus. All those who believe that Jesus loves you so much, raise your hands. So you are not supposed to keep a long face. He loves you. What more you need? Are you competing for the love of your father, your mother, your in-laws, your husband, your wife? No. God's love, St. Paul says, is sufficient for me. Lord, your love is sufficient for me. I need nothing else. I need nothing else. Saint Francis of Assisi was immersed with this divine love. That is why he said, where there is hatred, I want to put love. Not to receive but to give. Because Francis of Assisi, Romans 5.5, 5, God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. He was received, he received the power of the Holy Spirit and God's love. That is why Francis of Assisi was never seeking to be consoled, appreciated or receive anything of this world. He was all about giving, giving love, giving peace, giving joy, sharing. That's why he is called Second Christ. That is why he is known as another Christ. This is what the Lord wants us to grow. As you have attended many retreats, I know that community in Kuwait is a spiritual community. I was told by many people. The people have a lot of prayer experience, many seminars, except during the time of COVID, but still we had online services. We are there for God. But the Lord wants us to grow to that level of Saint Francis of Assisi. That's why we have Franciscan fathers here to show us that light of Francis of Assisi who was a man of God who never complained of anything. He was never there to receive but to give. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. We have seen that without faith we cannot please God and we need that extraordinary faith beyond what people say even in the midst of this huge crowd you need that faithful that heart that seek God in spite of what people will say and we have to believe that he loves you more than anyone more than your parents because he loves you he blocked human love he blocked certain relationship, certain friendship. So never complain, why this person behaves me like this? Why my husband does not love me the way I love? Let us stop questioning. You need God's love alone and he loves you irrespective of what you have done, who you are, what you do. Praise the, Lord. Praise, the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And now if God loves us so much beyond what we think, more than everyone in this world, why we don't experience this love? As we have these four days London retreat, we don't have enough time to preach everything. Today we'll focus about our problem. Tomorrow we will focus about forgiveness, then inner healing than the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And we have to know, we all have one problem. You know, people say, because I'm a priest, as Father Gaspar was saying, for 19 years, and I was always in the mission of retreat, and we have counseling every day after the retreat. Anyone who comes, we speak to them. And now, for me, some people, if it's a married woman, I know what she's going to say. The first word she will say, 
when i was in kenya she will start saying father you know my problem my problem is my husband she will start saying like this so i know a married woman will start saying her problem as her husband and but the husbands may not start saying like that but the wives usually not in quite here we are all good people it happened in kenya now when we ask them two three questions then we will be shocked to know that husband is not the problem we all have only one single problem this problem is called sin yes i n sin isaiah 59 1 and 2 isaiah 59 1 and 2 the hand of the lord is not too short to save us no his ears are too dull to hear us but our sins have become the barrier because of our transgressions the lord is not hearing us though his hand is strong though his ears are very sharp why our prayers are not getting answered because of our sin psalm 66:18 if i cherished iniquity in my heart my lord would not have heard if our prayers are going unanswered is because of one single problem this problem is called a sin but we don't want to be afraid of this problem jesus came to solve this problem john 1:29 this is the lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world jesus has come to solve this problem provided 1 john 1:7 to 9 if we acknowledge our sins the lord is going to forgive us if we say we have not sinned we lie but if we acknowledge our sins the lord is going to forgive us praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord and now we are going to see what kind of sin we have committed what are the sins most probably we have committed that the lord is not hearing us i have heard people saying they are sick they go to hospital they take medicine still they are sick if anybody says they are sick and medicine cannot heal them that definitely means the sickness is not physical but spiritual and this sickness cannot be healed with medicine that is why sickness can sinfulness can make us sick sin can cause sickness that does not mean all the sicknesses are caused by sin Psalm 107 verse 17 Psalm 107 verse 17 we read some of them were sick because they followed sinful ways some of them were sick so some are sick because of the sin that they have committed Sirach 38 9 and 10 Sirach 38 9 and 10 that is why the scripture says my child when you are sick delay not confess your sins and the most high will heal you the word of god says when you are sick what you have to do go to hospital take some paracetamol take some medicine take some tablets no my child sirak 38 9 and 10 when you are sick confess your sins let's read this word of god together my, my child, child when you are ill do not delay but pray to the lord and he will heal you give up your faults and direct your hands rightly and cleanse your heart from all sin what does it mean the lord is telling my child if you have a sickness and medicine cannot help you delay not first thing pray to the lord he will heal you give up your faults direct your hands rightly cleanse your heart from all sin make a true confession we had a retreat in nairobi this was a youth retreat monday to friday 9 am to 4 pm because it's not a residential retreat center in prayer house lovington in nairobi kenya so they have to come in the morning leave in the evening monday to friday wednesday is the day of confession so we prepare them for good confession on monday and tuesday and wednesday is the day of confession 
because they are youth there are over 1300 youngsters came for the retreat it was during their school holidays the youth have a problem they have to go in between so we lock the gate once they are inside until 4 pm we will not open the gate we also give them food bread tea and so on so on wednesday one particular girl she he she was shouting at the gate saying she wanted to go home she said she did not know it was a prison she did not know the lock was gate the gate was locked because they are youngsters with the permission of the parents we have done that so she is telling she had migraine for more than 9 years now she is almost 18 years now she forgot to carry that medicine and she wanted to go and take the medicine so she told the ushers the volunteers to open the gate then they said they need permission from the priest that's why then they came when i went there i saw this she was very angry shouting and she said that i cannot stay inside i want to go i need this medicine then just told her i beg you because as a priest i know that's a day of confession so i just asked did you confess she said no i cannot do anything i have migraine i need medicine now we told her just asked her how long you have this migraine she said now it is more than 8 years she is suffering from this so i asked her all these years you are taking medicine she said yes so i told her now you are a slave of a medicine do you want to leave this medicine she said but I, if i stop i get migraine today i forgot to take told her god brought you here to heal you god brought you here to set you free then she said no i i cannot just stop this medicine i cannot just open the gate we told her please i beg you you go but after confession please go after confession i beg you there were very few people i told her i can beg you like a beggar holding your feet please please make a confession then you go because i insisted too much she said let me try so we found a priest she made confession the retreat continued on friday the day of testimony we have testimony after the retreat this girl came onto the stage there were many and she asked her friends my dear friends she asked like this how many of you have migraine headache some lifted the hand and she said like this i have found a medicine for migraine and she said the medicine is not paracetamol or crocin the medicine i found is confession Amen. she said Praise immediately God. immediately when i confessed as if a cool breeze is entering into my head i was healed now since that day wednesday i lost all my weight i had heaviness in my head i'm healed my dear sisters and brothers sin and she remembered she had a hatred towards someone who abused her she could not forgive the people and the lord reminded her every sin and it was more than 8 years she made a confession she hated everyone the moment she confessed my child read together everybody my, my child, child when you are ill do not delay but pray to the lord and he will heal you give up your faults and direct your hands rightly and cleanse your heart from all sin the lord is reminding us today don't be afraid of sin however we need to renounce give up our sins forgive and confess our sins and that's the way god's mercy is going to flow unto us father noel and father gasper they told me there is confession every day during the service but from specifically from uh, wednesday onwards we have confession we'll again prepare you for confession because this retreat is all about to make a sincere confession to receive a renewal in our family and the inner healing praise the lord praise the lord raise up your right hands and say praise the lord praise the lord we call him jesus as he is in our midst let us remember we are with him let his name be honored 
let his presence be approved jesus we call him jesus 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 we sing together jesus together Jesus, Jesus together louder everyone can never never punish us believe god can never punish us keep down your hands some people think and they have this wrong knowledge because i have committed this sin because i committed abortion because i had a boyfriend because i led a miserable life in the past that is why i suffer like this today let no one misguide you if jesus wanted to punish us why he hung on the cross and paid the price for us isaiah 53 4 and 5 by his wounds we are healed our punishments came upon him our punishment came upon jesus for because of our sins he suffered so let no one tell you that because of your sins is what you are means your god is punishing you god cannot punish you but your sin has its consequence god can never punish you but it is your own sin that has its consequence not god we read but he was wounded for our transgressions crushed for our iniquities upon him was the punishment that made us whole and by his bruises remember the prodigal son he broke all the 10 commandments that's why he was living with the pigs his life was completely destroyed as if he is not a human anymore from being the presence of in the presence of the father he destroyed everything he destroyed everything did father punish him no. yes or no no did abba father punish the prodigal son no, no. then who punished him his own sin Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 19 Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 19 Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 19 your own wickedness will punish you and your apostasies will convict you know and see that it is evil and bitter for you to forsake the Lord your God The fear of me is not in you says the Lord God of hosts your wickedness will punish you your apostasies will convict you not God but our own sins visiting witchcraft soothsayers fortune tellers palmist babas any kind of people who are not approved by God all those visitations This is Jeremiah 2:13 again my people have committed two evils they have rejected the fountain of living waters and they have dug cisterns that can hold no water if anyone have involved with horoscope palmistry fortune telling witchcraft this is what causing many blocks because we ourselves rejected the first commandment i am your god you shall not have any other god and you have to love your god with all your heart with all your soul and with all your strength if we have rejected that we need to ask the lord for forgiveness deuteronomy chapter 18 
Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses from 9 we read when you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you you must not learn to imitate the abhorrent practices of those nations no one shall be found among you who makes a son or daughter pass through fire or who practices divination or is a soothsayer or an ogre or a sorcerer or go or one who casts spells or who consults ghosts or spirits or who seeks oracles from the dead for whoever does these things is abhorrent to the Lord it is because of such abhorrent practices that the Lord your God is driving them out from before you you must remain completely loyal to the Lord your God although these nations that you are about to dispossess do heed to soothsayers and diviners as for you the Lord your God does not permit you to do so most of the people practice evil things saying and and justifying my friends go there my people go there my family members go there Jesus told Saint Maria Faustina Kowalska like this my daughter people will do this and that they will say this and that but you are my daughter you should not do what others are doing you should not speak or repeat what others are talking you should follow what I tell you Faustina was made fun of her own sisters her own people because she was just a class 3 uneducated woman she just grabbed what Jesus said so she people made fun of her that's why today Maria Faustina Kowalska has become a profound saint she imitated only what Jesus and the Word of God commanded her to do she did not imitate what others are doing today as you are here in in this country for you many of you majority of you this is a foreign country for you this is a different nation for you and the Lord wants you to follow what your Lord is telling without offending your neighbor when you follow the way of the Lord the Lord will make you an instrument of peace like Francis of Assisi without making any disorder or chaos praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord hallelujah hallelujah praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord and the Lord is also telling us most of our blocks are created by ourselves Romans 6:23 the wages of sin is death we ourselves brought these blocks in our life many people I have seen sometimes people ask a question but the answer the Lord gives is very different very different I still remember a lady who had severe back pain severe back pain for many years so she is talking about back pain then while praying we just asked her a question how long since you made your last confession she said during the time of her marriage that is now 20 years back she made her last confession so then again we asked her that uh, did you ever go through any kind of uh, abortion or so on then she is telling, she asking a question, is abortion a sin? I never thought back pain and abortion is related. The wages of sin is death. Death symbolically means it is stagnation in our life. And she was set free. She was set free. Let no one misguide us. Sin is the only barrier. But this is not a big barrier because Jesus paid the price for us. But it is important that we confess it and we renounce it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because you shall not kill, Jesus said. That means you shall not commit abortion suicide murder drinking alcohol taking drugs these are all killing 
our body which is God's temple 1 Corinthians chapter 6 19 and 20 your body don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit that you are not your own you are purchased by the blood of the Lamb praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord so because we do not have the right to give life no human can give life we have no right to take life so if anyone is thinking or justifying it is okay it's a human right remember anything that is against the word of God is not a human right it's against God's plan it's against God's commandment praise the Lord praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. we had a retreat in Melbourne after the retreat a mother brought a 13 year old girl asking father can you just pray over my daughter because she's complaining that something is moving in her body something is moving in her body so we said we'll pray so when we were praying with this crucifix like a crucifix like this on her head the mother said show where it is from her neck down is what something is moving she feels something is moving in her body so the mother is showing to put the cross on her neck and pray so when we were trying to put the cross because the mother is forcing us to pray there was a tattoo of a lizard tattoo of a lizard so we asked her from where you got this tattoo then she is telling me father this is a good luck tattoo somebody told me if you put it then you will get some kind of good fortunes then I told her definitely it is a good luck tattoo imagine now it is moving all over your body tattoo means tattoo literally means I belong to you tattoo means what so when somebody puts a tattoo of a crocodile they say I belong to the crocodile if you put the, the tattoo of a dragon you say you belong to the dragon if you put the tattoo of a boyfriend you say you belong to this stupid boyfriend and you cannot escape devil is a deceiver he is looking for every opportunity to infiltrate inside you I, I was in Italy for some time I can find who was with me he's an Italian he shaved his head to put tattoos from head to the foot full of tattoos tattoo of a fish tattoo of different type of women all kinds of names and everything why because he's ignorant we read in Leviticus chapter 19 verse 28 Leviticus 19 28 reject it if it is not from the word of God you can reject everything that I preach to you without the support of the word of God because human word cannot change us it's only God's word because Jesus himself is word made flesh and he wants to communicate with us Leviticus 19 28 we read you shall not make any gashes in your flesh for the dead or tattoo any marks upon you I am the Lord you shall not mark any tattoo in your body because you are not your own you are the temple of the Holy Spirit you are purchased by the Lord you cannot do whatever you want 1 Corinthians 6 20 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 20 you are not your own you are purchased by the blood of the lamb your body is not your own Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 10 Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 10 this chapter speaks about abominations in the temple abominations in the temple temple means your body but it is a symbol and when the prophet ended inside the temple he could see the tattoos he could see the portraits of all kinds of animals we read I entered and looked their portrait on the wall all around were all kinds of creeping things and loathsome 
animals and all the idols of the house of Israel when the prophet is looking inside the wall of the temple he could see on this wall portrayed all, all kinds of uh, creeping things lots of animals the wall symbolizes your human body we are not supposed to mark any tattoo or the picture of anyone somebody asked me father i have a cross in my hand it's not to me who put somebody else is it a problem i told her there's no problem but when you put a cross you say you belong to the cross don't complain when so many crosses come to your life <laughs> there is a chemical that i can help us to remove it maybe you have a tattoo in your body please forgive me if you have a tattoo in your body the first step hide it so that no one may see it later on you can remove it however if you have a tattoo out of ignorance you did not know you even put on your children arts 1730 arts 1730 arts chapter 17 verse 30 god does not consider the period of ignorance but now he wants everyone to repent and return to the lord maybe the time of ignorance you may have marked some tattoo please don't feel guilty god is not a judge he is not waiting to punish you but from now but from now no more tattoos even for our children do you agree with me yes father psalm psalm 471 means clap your hands shout to the lord and praise the lord when i say psalm 471 you have to immediately clap your hands and say jesus psalm 471 say jesus and clap your hands psalm 471 jesus very good Now let us read the word of God while God has overlooked together with me while the times of human ignorance now he want everyone to repent now he commands all people everywhere to repent praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord there was a man who came he was jobless he had a job 8 years he lost his job and he is struggling to get back his job and he was not getting it back he wanted to know why god is in a way for him god is punishing him why he is not getting his job i have told you you may ask jesus a question and he may give you a very different answer but that answer is the root cause of your problem once you get that answer your problems are solved because he knows the past the present and the future hebrews 13:8 because jesus christ is the same yesterday today and forever always remember you are past is present before jesus your past is present before jesus no science can find your past the feelings of your heart the emotions of your body but your lord jesus because he is god of all creation praise the lord praise the lord this man lost his job he is struggling all his best to get back his job while praying for him god gave this word of god from proverbs chapter 19 verse 26 proverbs 19 26 proverbs 19 26 the word of god says that those who do violence to their father and chase away their mother are children who cause shame and bring reproach those who do violence to their father please repeat those who do and chase away his problem is joblessness is a qualified man he tried everything to get his job but the lord is talking him about his relationship with his parents so we asked him have you ever done violence to your father then he said father i lost my father my dad when i was 2 years old so i don't remember i don't even have seen my father so i don't think i have done any violence to my father then we asked him how you ever hurt your mother chase away your mother then he said 
Father, I was working abroad. My, ma my wife and my mother-in-law, they were like North Pole and South Pole. They were never connecting together. So my wife threatened me that I have to take a decision because she was with my mom. I was abroad that she said she cannot adjust with my mom. And we put our mother in an outhouse. And later I came to know my mother was not given enough food, enough medicine because my wife was very angry and I know my mother was really, really suffered from the hand of my wife but not from me. We told him like this. Your mother became a widow when you were two years old. You are the only son. She never again married. She brought you up, made you to be educated. And you got a job, you got a wife. The Lord blessed you. The Lord gave you a job so that you may also provide for your mother. When you refused to help your mom, refused to give her food and medicine, your job has no meaning in the sight of God. This is Sirach chapter 7, 27, 28. Sirach 7, 27, 28. Honor your father with all your heart. Do not forget the birth pangs of your mother. Remember it was of her that you were born. How can you repay what your mother has done to you? Sirach 7, 27 and 28. Kindly please read together. With all your heart, honor your father. And do not forget the birth pangs of your mother. Remember that it was of your parents you were born. How can you repay? What they have given to you. I am born in a family of ten children. One day I asked my mother a wrong question. I asked her how long I was there in her womb. She told me nine days and ten, nine months and ten days. And I know one thing. I can never carry my mother in my womb. I can never repay what my mother has done to me. But my God wanted that I carry my mom in my heart. Because remember it was of your parents you were born. How can you repay what they have given to you. We told this man, you need the blessing of your mom for you to get the job because, because of your mom you have been blessed. Even Genesis chapter 49 verse 26 we read, the blessings of your father, your parents are greater than the blessings of forefathers, eternal mountains. Forefathers are Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. They are holy people. Our God is known as God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. But the Holy Scripture says the blessings of your old sick parents are greater than the blessings of holy fathers. You need the blessings of your parents. I have seen marriages are taking place when the children receive the blessing of the parents. Childless couples receive children when they receive the blessings of their parents. I've seen jobless people receive job when they receive the blessings of their parents. Certain hereditary or certain sicknesses, even allergy, asthma and different sicknesses are getting healed when children humble themselves and receive the blessings of the parents. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Psalm 47.1 My mother used to beat me minimum three times a day because I am born in a family of ten children. My mother is extremely busy. The only way to discipline me is to take a stick and beat me. So sometimes she has beaten me when I have done mistake. Sometimes she has beaten me out of her anger and frustration. But after all, God has given my mom right to beat me as I am a child. Just before my ordination, my spiritual father, the retreat preacher, told that you all need the blessings of your parents. Before my ordination, I went to my parents. I called them into our small prayer room. I knelt in front of them. 
I touched the feet of my father and my mother and I told them forgive me I have hurt you forgive me and bless me my parents they both lifted me immediately they don't want me to hold their feet they hugged me they both cried they kept their hands on my head they blessed me today when i look back that was the best thing ever happened in my life my parents blessed me my father studied only up to class 5 my mother studied only up to class 8 they are poor people but god blessed them god chose me chose my parents more than me somebody prayed for me a priest a strange priest and he told me antony never boast about yourself is not because of your merit you are called your parents and grandparents are very very prayerful people only because of that you are chosen i said that is very very true Amen. sisters and brothers we know as in spirituality there are elemental spirits elemental spirits this is ephesians chapter 6 verses from 11 we read our fight is not against enemies of blood and flesh ephesians 6 from 12 we are not fighting against human beings we are fighting against the wiles of the devil what what are these wiles of the devil he who causes all kinds of deception misunderstanding and problems and we live in a society in a culture when i was born when i was small basically i was afraid of my parents i was really afraid of my parents these days i have my brothers they are married they are afraid of their children <laughs> and i always thank god for becoming a priest because these days parents how to live with real fear i was also in uk i was so surprised parents are very afraid because one <coughs> child in uk said i will call 911 you know the police sisters and brothers this is ephesians chapter 6 1 and 2 for this is a, a very important message ephesians 6 1 and 2 children obey your parents in the lord for this is right honor your father and mother this is the first commandment with a promise so that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth you may live long on the earth certain sicknesses certain problems certain blocks is it because we have failed to receive the blessings of our parents do it today itself maybe they are far away there are some who are not even talking to their parents always complaining telling of shown partiality i am not your favorite you love only my brother you don't love me let us stop making all these kinds of accusations whatever it may be as the water flows from up down you as a child you need the blessings of your parents as a child it's not a must that the child should bless the parents but a child should need the blessings of the mother one day a person came for counseling when he came for counseling we just opened the bible and the lord gave this word of god this is from sirach chapter 3 was 4 sirach 3 4 is what the lord gave the word of god sirach 3 4 those who respect their mother are like those who lay up treasure you know this person is starting business everything is losing no money stays with him huge loan gets money just go away and he does not know when he came for prayers without telling anything we opened the bible and we got this word of god please read together even if you are outside the church wherever you are look and read together and those who respect their mother are like those who lay up treasure once again and those who respect their mother are like those who lay up treasure unfortunately this man was not talking to the mother for more than 2 years 
there are some people like that keeping such hard heart lay up treasure anywhere if you find there is a financial stagnation do you respect your father or your mother this is god's commandment those who respect their mother it is a commandment let no one misguide us these commandments are for our own prosperity i have heard this bishop this is bishop joseph strambikel our bishop he is the bishop of siro malabar epaki of great britain one day he was talking personally and he asked me a question father anthony do you know how can people become rich how people become rich i said i don't know he told me there is a secret in the bible in the word of god and he told me like this it was the first time i ever hear such an interpretation he said there was a rich man came to jesus and then jesus asked him do you keep the commandments then he said of course i keep all the commandments then jesus said there is one thing that you are lacking you have to sell all your properties bishop joseph told me like this father those who keep the commandments will become rich Psalm 47:1 Why this why this young man was rich because he obeyed the commandments praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord now you know there are when you travel i have traveled then i have seen in the airport some airports they written vision 2030 vision 2050 what is the vision eradication of poverty let me ask you can we eradicate poverty in 2050 no. yes or no? no can we eradicate uh, poverty in in uh, 2100 no. yes or no? no some say yes some say no some have no answers don't worry we have to read this word of god so that you understand this is deuteronomy chapter 15 verse 10 give deuteronomy 15 10 give liberally and be ungrudging when you do so for on this account the lord your god will bless you in all your work and in all that you undertake since there will never cease to be someone in need on the earth i therefore command you open your hand to the poor and needy neighbor in your land since there will never cease to be some in need on the earth that means the poor will be always there on earth so can we eradicate poverty yes or no then why there is poor the poor is the door for the rich to reach heaven the rich will go to heaven only when they help the poor so the poor is there for you and for us to go to heaven praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord i was told kuwait is a very rich country with a very rich people like you but it's very difficult unless we give to the poor why god gave somebody riches not for himself but for the poor let no one misguide us psalm 411 blessed are those who consider the poor praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord at the same time when we are in a rich situation that it can also be possible that we may love money more than god i do remember in one of the retreats a person came with three problems the first problem he was sick with aids hiv the second problem was that his parents rejected him the third problem though he was married he was childless sick rejected by parents and he was childless 
this is his problem and he is telling why god is not merciful to me why god has punished me god knows as a family i need children i need healing i need to be connected with my family then why god has not heeded my prayer when he is complaining the lord spoke through 1 timothy 6 9 and 10 1 timothy 6 9 and 10 those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil and in their eagerness to be rich some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains please repeat after me for the love of money, love of money is a root of all kinds of evil and in their eagerness to be rich, and in their eagerness to be rich some have wandered away from faith and pierced themselves with many pains in their eagerness to be rich my dear sisters and brothers we asked him about his family about his riches he said he's born in a family of eight children his father was a drunkard drunk and destroyed everything but his relatives were very rich nobody was willing to help so he made a document which is not his own a false certificate he got a job in the working place he found a woman who was already married but separated from the husband and he found this woman had big flats she is very rich the only daughter so he got married to her in the court he became rich but this woman was already affected with the virus so he also got infected because this woman was not a christian belonged to another religion now the parents did not support it when he saw this woman he saw she is rich nothing else Let's read this word of God together once again. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from faith and pierced themselves with many pains. Because he wanted to be rich, he even made a false document, senseless and harmful desires. Because he wanted to be rich, he even rejected his religion, his faith. He wandered away from faith. People go to witchcraft, people go for black magic, people go to different things. Why? Because they wanted to make money. I am not talking about people in Kuwait. We are very good people. There are people just because they wanted to make money, more money. They wanted to become rich. Some people, their motto, motto is to become rich. And they try anything. They are wandered away from faith and pierced themselves with many pains. Why his parents rejected him? Because they cannot associate with someone who started live in adultery. Those who are not married in the church and live together, they live in the life of adultery. How can the parents, though they are poor, approve someone who is not married in the church and live together? It's a life of a pagan. And pierced themselves, he became sick. So he said, God is not merciful. But remember, he was not merciful to God. God who gave him commandments. God who loved him. He rejected God for a woman to become rich. He rejected God to become rich, to make money. He, was, he became blind. Sisters and brothers, we are in the presence of the Lord. He is here. He is our way maker. Let's kneel down. We are entering into the Eucharistic presence. He loves us. He is not here to judge us. He is not here to punish us. John 8.32 You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. John chapter 17 verse 17 Your word is the truth. Sanctify them in truth. 
John 15 3 by the words I have spoken to you you have been cleansed Isaiah 55 10 and 11 as the rain falls from heaven and never retains so shall my word be that which comes out of my mouth shall not return in vain we are listening to the word of God the Lord is here not to not to punish us not to judge us never to accuse us but to convict us about our sin and to lead us to repentance Romans chapter 2 verse 4 Romans chapter 2 verse 4 do you despise the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience do you not realize that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance God's kindness is meant to lead us to repentance Lord I believe you are here you are touching the heart of everyone you are the way maker the miracle worker I give myself to you my Lord where else I will go who else will help me there is no one in this world I know can tolerate me Jesus. with all my terrible weaknesses and Jesus. repeated sins Jesus. come Lord Jesus. Jesus I come to you the way I am Yes, I believe you are here. Yes, Lord. I believe you are moving in our midst. Yes, Lord. I'm here to worship you, my Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm here to worship you, falling at your feet, saying, yes, I am nothing without yes, you, my master. Jesus. I am nothing before you because I'm a sinner. Jesus. I am just a piece of clay. Yes, if you forget me, I will fall apart. Yes, Lord. You are here moving in our midst. Yes, Lord.